All right, we are finally going to fix hands. Uh, so if you watched my live stream last Saturday, I showed how to do this, but I ran into a couple of issues and I've since resolved those. Uh, so this is gonna show you how to fix hands in about 90 some percent of your images, 1.5 SDXL, uh, whatever model, it all works very well. And it's pretty simple. Quick word from our sponsor today, uh, Gigabyte has sponsored the channel. Uh, so they sent us a, a 17X laptop, which we are using uh, and during the live streams and a lot of our videos here. Uh, so you can kind of check that out. It is a 4080 card in it. So uh, we can take it on the road. We can do uh, amazing artwork uh, when we're not at home. Uh, it is a fantastic laptop and I had a lot of fun with this. Again, during live streams, we play with it quite a bit. Uh, so you get a chance to see the features a little bit more in action, uh, but it is quite fast. Uh, so it's been able to knock these things out a lot faster than my older 3090 card that we've been using pretty much uh, for the longest time now. So again, huge thanks to Gigabyte for supporting the channel. So I've here a very basic graph and I'm going to be using the Juggernaut model. Uh, you, again, you can use whatever model you'd like and have a very simple prompt here, portrait of a beautiful woman in a summer dress in a flower garden, waving her hands and excited. So setting ourselves up for success with waving her hands. Uh, we have no negative prompt here. Uh, you can throw things in here like the word hands is a pretty popular one recently uh, that helps correct hands or, or whatever. Uh, but again, we're going to do this a more methodical way and not just hope that the prompt works. Uh, we have a custom node here for the empty latent, but you do whatever you'd like to do. And then a standard case sampler. So I'm just picked a, a seed here and we're gonna use a fixed seed for this. Uh, so we don't change a lot of variables as we explore this. Uh, so just 20 steps. Uh, you do want to do enough steps to make sure the model does have a chance to resolve the image. Meaning don't be too quick on this because once we've done this, we really don't want to have to do another case sampler again later uh, to help with any residual noise. We wanna try and get it right the first time. Uh, because we only want to try and fix the hands. We don't want to try and fix the image again. Now, it's not to say we can't upscale when we're done to try and do something else. Uh, but again, for this, uh, we really don't have to deal with that. And if you don't have this preview, remember in your manager here, you can go and change your preview here to the slow version and show you in every sampler. Yeah, she has lots of extra fingers. Looks quite exciting. All right, so let's fix this up. So the node that does all the work here is this mesh graph former. So if you type in the word mesh, uh, you should see it in here. There's a couple of them. There's a face mesh, uh, but we're looking for the depth map preprocessor here. Uh, so what this is going to do is this comes with the control net uh, uh, auxiliary preprocessor. So if you're doing any control net, you probably already have this. If you're up to date, remember always do a fetch all or update all. Uh, before you complain that you can't get it to work uh, because this stuff changes on a daily basis. Uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna take and find the hands, which is what this does, but it also takes and figures out what the hand shape should be. And it uses a very small model to do that. Uh, so we just take this image and push it in here. We can take this image and pull it right back out again and see what we get. Now, because we're using a fixed seed, we don't have to worry about this thing taking time to process again. We just hit Q and it'll go right to this graph former here and we'll see what we get. So what we're looking for out of here is just the hands, and it should show them in a depth map. And there we go. So the hands, if you notice the lightest part is toward the camera and the darkest part is away from the camera. I think it does this somewhat randomly based on what I can see, uh, but it does help the model understand how the hand is laid out. Uh, so I think that's a good idea. You can also work with this resolution here if you want more out of it, uh, but I think for this, uh, this is good enough because we only need to guide this depth, all right? So from here, what do we do to fix this? Well, let's use a control net. And I like to use the advanced one here, but that's just my personal preference. And we wanna do is we wanna take this image, which is the depth map, and we wanna put that in here. You're not going to use this image down here because this control net is expecting a depth map. And we can tell that because if we pull this control net out and control net loader, we're going to load in the depth map. So let's just go find it. I have a lot of control nets on here. So I'm gonna take the word depth and I'm going to look for this one. Again, you can look for whatever one you want. I'm just gonna use the one that's official release from stability. Um, is that the one I grabbed? Let me double check that. Should be the 128 Laura, yes. Uh, so that's the one that I want, although any of these will work. All right, so from here, uh, we should be able to kind of figure out what we need to do now. We need to hook up uh, these positives and negatives over here. So we'll just go, I'm just gonna drag these across the screen. You can make your graph a lot nicer when you're done with this, uh, but for now, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and then we're gonna take this into a case sampler. Now here's where I screwed up on Saturday. 
Uh, let's just grab this K sampler here. Again, I hold down my Alt key, and if I click and drag, it will duplicate the node. And so I'm just going to hook up the positive and negative like I did before. And again, I'm going to show you this because I ran into this and I got really frustrated and I couldn't figure it out. Uh, let's save you some pain here. I'm going to grab this and drag it up and create a reroute for it. This is the model here. And I'm probably going to do the same uh, with the VAE eventually because we're going to need it. Now, this latent, I'm going, to I'm going to actually screw up twice here and show you kind of what I did. If we take this latent and we drag it over here too. Uh, now we can take this and decode it. And again, we need our VAE. Like I said, let's go ahead and drag this up and over. And I'm going to explain this again. So don't freak out if you're like, oh my God, I lost this guy. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to save this one because that being. Okay, so let's walk through what I did real quick here because it's kind of a, a spaghetti mess, uh, but that's okay. So up here, uh, this is going to be our group, right? So this is our control net group. And all we're doing in here is taking this, this graph former to create this depth map. And now also creates a mask. Let's take a look at that mask as well. So I have this really nice image to mask node here from the MTB set. And I use that in preview this as well. So you can kind of see what the mask looks like. And then for our control net, uh, we're using a, just a full strength control net with, with, no, with no specific st uh, start or end. And we're going to use a depth map here. Okay. So if we hit Q prompt on this, we can see what this looks like. This is what the, the mask looks like versus the actual depth map. So you see this has got a lot more detail and this is just a mask of what we're going to be replacing. Now, what I did is I just ran this thing directly into this case sampler and you see, first of all, that the picture is very different. And why is that? Well, because we only want to redraw the hands. We don't want to redraw the whole picture. Uh, so we need to make sure we mask this. Uh, so in order to mask this, we want to actually this it's this latent here, this line here. That's the problem. I uh, know there's a couple ways to do this. One is if we type in in paint, there's V A E in code for in painting. This node here uh, is one way to do it. Now I don't have as much luck with this one as I do with uh, just the standard one, the masking one. Uh, this one tends to create rectangles around the hands, uh, as I'll show you. Uh, well, as you'll experiment with, I'm not going to show you the mistake here because there's other mistakes we're going to make. Uh, but I don't really think this node works as well. But again, you try what you want to try. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to type in the word mask. And I'm going to use set latent noise mask here. So I'm going to take the latent that came from our first case sampler. And we're going to take the mask that came from Again, this refiner here that looks like this. This is this mask we're grabbing. But we're going to grab the green line. We're not going to grab the, the blue one. This is just our preview. And we're going to drag that into. So what we've done is we're basically saying the only part that I want you to correct is the part that is in white here. Everything else, leave the image alone. So if we run this again, what happens? And you see that it is only refining just the hands. Should end up with something that looks a lot better. Here we go. Do you see that her hands are now proper? Um, although they look a little wonky. And why do they look wonky? Well, they look wonky, and this is the mistake that I had made. This is this took me a little bit to find. Is you notice that the seed is twenty on both of them, and that was the issue. So make sure that the seeds are different. What I had done on my live stream was I was using the, the global. Um, this global seed here, which I love. It's a little remote control you can drag around the screen with you and kind of keep track of what your seeds are. Uh, but what it does is it keeps fixed for all controls and keeps all of them the same. And I kept running into that problem. So now if we run this again, we should end up with a lot less issue with that kind of crunchiness around the hand. So some things to be aware of with this is that it does not know what the right size of a hand is, right? So it may make the hand too large or uh, because, again, it doesn't know that it's supposed to be the right size. So it's just going to take whatever size hand you have and fix it. Now, the other issue is that it's not going to fix fingers that are too long. The issue I have here is if we look at this mask, you can see that we can kind of see the individual fingers here. And if we have multiple fingers, let's say we have one with like five or six fingers, and there's a finger sticking up through here, that finger is not going to be removed because the mask is only, only using the hand here. So I have a suggestion, and that is, it's right here. It's based on depth for the mask. We're going to change it to tight B boxes. This will create a bounding box around just the depth 
uh, of the hand here. So these will turn into rectangles. Uh, and then you can use these little mask expands uh, here to kind of help with the padding uh, to see if you can get a better result out of it. Now, I don't think these are the default values. I think I've messed with this a bit, but uh, again, the results should be uh, whatever, obviously whatever you get to work. But you'll see here that this will turn to rectangles now. So when it goes through, it will use a rectangle. Now, this will take care of the extra fingers that we might have uh, because now they won't be seen through the additional fingers. So this should work out better. However, uh, the issue I have with this one is sometimes that the fingers could be extra long and stick out the top of this. Uh, so there's actually another option here, and that is the original. See, the original will create a much larger rectangle, again, paying attention to your mask expansion here, and that should help quite a bit. One of those. And you see the bounding box is now much larger. Obviously, my settings are a bit aggressive on, on the size of this, uh, but you get the idea. And it'll go through and mask out just the hands and replace them with the proper meshed hands. So there you go. We end up with something that's much nicer. Now, from here, I would recommend that you take this into an upscaler, uh, which will help with the face and other, any other issues. Again, I use the ultimate upscaler here, uh, but that should help resolve this and any issues there might be with any lines that might show up uh, you shouldn't have too many, uh, but uh, it can happen. So I'll post this graph in the community area for all the people who help support the channel so you guys can have it. There's actually a much prettier graph that I did from the live stream on Saturday, uh, so I'll make sure you guys get that one. Huge thanks to Gigabyte, our sponsor today. Uh, so really appreciate them uh, taking time to support the channel. And again, all the people who have supported us as well. We have over 300 members now, so we are rocking it. And again, I'm putting all the files and all these other things into the community area here on YouTube. Uh, for all the people who are sponsors for the channel. So again, thank you so much. And make sure you go in there and look around because you have access to months and months of uh, all the live streams and all these different graphs that I've got, as well as a bunch of other things. There's some bedding, embeddings in there that I'm giving away. Uh, so trying to keep you guys uh, buried with goodies, and I really appreciate your support. So everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.